friends, I'm Vishma and you are watching my channel G Tutor. Today I will be discussing a mock test for mathematics. You all know that for mathematics 30 questions are asked. You, uh, everybody know that practice makes men perfect. Only by practicing mock tests you can score high marks. Even if you know all portions of maths, you won't be able to do it when you are right facing an exam. So only by practicing mock tests you will be able to score higher marks. From today onwards, I will be uploading mock tests for Max and reasoning on daily basis. Today I will be uploading mathematics. Tomorrow, uh, the topic will be reasoning and so on. Uh, it will be better you purchase some online mock test series so that you can practice every day. Now let us get to our class. This is the first question. Find the sum of 1 minus 1 by n plus 1 plus 1 minus 2 by n plus 1 plus etc plus 1 minus n by n plus 1. First let us open the bracket. So the terms will be 1 minus 1 by n plus 1 plus 1 minus 2 by n plus 1 plus etc plus 1 minus n by n plus 1. Let us group together all ones and other terms. So 1 plus 1 plus etc plus 1 minus let us take 1 by 1 by n, by n plus 1 is present in each of these terms. So let us take the minus and 1 by n plus 1 as common. So the remaining term here is 1. In the second term it is 2. Minus into plus is minus so 2 plus etc. Plus this term is n. Yeah. Uh, we can see that this term exists up to n. So there are n ones. So the sum of n ones is n. Sum of, sum of 10 ones is 10. Similarly, sum of n ones is n. Minus 1 by n plus 1 into, what is this? This is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus etc up to n. That is sum of n terms of a series. So 1 plus 2 plus etc. The sum of first n terms is given by the formula n into n plus 1 by 2. Here we can cancel n plus 1 and n plus 1. So n minus n by 2. n minus n by 2 is n by 2. So the answer of this question is n by 2. Next question. The unit digit of 3 into 38 into 537 into 1256. In order to find unit digit of a number, you just multiply the unit digit of each of these multiples. That is 3 into. If any number is 123, this 3 is called units digit. This is 2 is called hundreds digit. Sorry, tens digit and one is called hundreds digit. So, the multiple of the unit digit is just the multiple of two. Sorry, three, eight, seven, and six. So, three into eight into seven into six. Three sums are twenty-one. Eight six are forty-eight. Again, the multiplication of just unit digits. So, one into eight. Eight is the answer of this question. Next question. This is the next question. If the students of 9th class are arranged in rows of 6, 8, 12 or 16, no student is left behind. Then the possible number of students in the class. It is given that if the students of 9th class are arranged either in rows of 6 rows, 6 rows or 8 rows or 12 rows or 16 rows, nobody is left behind. That is, it is possible to arrange uh, students as a group of 6 rows, 8 rows, 12 rows or 16 rows. So, we have to find the total number of students in the class. Actually, this is what we have to study from the portion LCM and HCM. So, here we have to find the LCM of these numbers which gives the total number of students. What is the LCM of 6, 8, 12 and 16 it's if any of if the highest number among this is divisible by the other numbers then it will be the LCM. Here the 16 is not able to be divided by 6. So 16 is not the LCM. So we have to find the LCM. 2, 2 3s are, 2 4s are, 2 6s are, 2 8s are. 2, 2 2s are, 2 3s are, 2 4s are. Again with 2. Next is a 3. 1, 1, 1, 
2. So, LCM is 2 into 2 into 2 into 2. 2 raised to 4 is 16. 16 into 3, LCM is 48. So, the number of students should be 48. But, in the given option, 48 is not present. So, the number of students will be a multiple of 48. 48 into 2. We have to check 48 into 2. 8 are 16. 4 are 8 plus 1, 9. 96. That is present in the option. So, 96 is the answer of the given question. Next question. This is the next question. The greatest four digit number exactly divisible by 10, 15 and 20 is. So the greatest four digit number is the 9, 9, 9, 9. This is the greatest four digit number. And the, uh, we have to find the greatest four digit number that is exactly divisible by these three numbers. If uh, a number is divisible by uh, three of these numbers, then that number is divisible by its LCM also. So, this question is from LCM and CF. Uh, the LCM, of course, we have to find the LCM of 10, 15 and 20. I think you all know to uh, do LCM. So, I am directly writing the value of LCM. LCM is 60. So, what we have to do here is we have to take the largest four digit number. It is 9999 nine, nine, nine. and divide by this LCM. 60, 61 is 60, remainder is 39, 399, 60 into 6 is 360, again remainder is 39, 399, again 6 times 360, remainder is 39. So, if you are dividing 9999 nine, nine, nine by 60, the remainder is 39. So, the perfect multiple of 60 is 9999 nine, nine, nine. that is the greatest four digit number minus remainder which is equal to 9 minus 9 0 9 minus 3 6 9 9 6 0 this is the number which is exactly divisible by these three numbers so what we have to do we have to write the latest four digit number divide by the LCM of this number it gives a remainder this Number minus reminder gives the number which is multiple of 60, which is divisible by these three numbers. Next question. This is the next question. If X men can do a piece of work in X days, then number of days in which Y men can complete, can do the same work. If X men do a piece of work in X days, in how many days Y men will do the same work? So we have to use the chain rule. Chain rule is if M1 man work for D1 days H1 hours, W1 work is completed, then M2 man uh, working D2 days and H2 hours complete a work W2. These two can be related. This is the chain rule. Here we are mentioning only about man and days. So we can equate only that. Two. It is necessary to equate only that. Two. That is M1 D1 is equal to M2 D2. M1 is X men can do uh, a piece of work in X days. Similarly, Y man can do it in D2 days. D2 is equal to X into X, X square by these many days. Next question. Next question. Three persons undertake to complete a piece of work for rupees 1200. The first person complete the work in 8 days, second person in 12 days, third person in 16 days. They complete the work with the help of a fourth person in three days. What does the fourth person get? It is given that three person uh, undertook to complete a piece of work in, uh, for 1200 rupees. It is given the time taken by each of these three persons. Let them be A, B and C. A takes 8 days to complete. B alone takes 12 days and 3 alone takes 16 days to complete the entire work. And it is also given, they complete the work with the help of a fourth person. A, B, C took the help of another person. Let it be D also to complete the work. So, we have to find how much rupees did the fourth person D get. What does fourth person get? Which is, this is what we have to find. So, let us uh, note down what is given in the question. Let the first person be A. A takes 8 days to complete the work. So, 
A is one day's work. One day's work is one by. Total work is always one. So A is one day's work is one by. Similarly, B takes twelve days to complete the work. So B's one day's work is one by. Similarly, C takes sixteen days to complete the work. C's one day's work is one by sixteen. So A plus B plus C's one day's work is sum of their individual one day's work. So this is the Work completed by each of them when working together for one day. So the LCM of eight, twelve, and sixteen is forty-eight. Eight into six is forty-eight. Twelve into four is forty-eight. Sixteen plus up. So six plus four, thirteen by forty-eight is the work completed by A, B, and C in one day. One day's work. It is given that they complete the work with the help of fourth person in three days. If they complete the work in three days, then the one day's work is one by three. That is, A plus B plus C along with the fourth person D. Their one day's work. Thus, they complete the work in three days, so it is one by three. So, from here we have we can find. D is one day's one day's work. It, we uh, we have A plus B plus C is one day's work, and A plus C plus D is one day's work. So D is one day's work. Work is equal to A plus B plus C plus D is one day's work minus A plus B plus C is one day's work. So one by three minus one by three minus thirteen by forty-eight. Three into sixteen is forty-eight. So one into sixteen is thirteen by forty-eight. Thirteen by forty-eight is thirty-eight. Thirty-eight minus thirty-eight 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 is thirty-eight. Thir
That is 1 by 12 the part of total work is completed by A and B together in one day. They work for 7 days. So, they are 7 days work. Which is equal to 7 times work completed in one day. 7 into 1 by 12. This much work is done in one day. So, in 7 days, 7 into 1 by 12th work is done. Remaining work is, total work is 1. So, 1 minus 1, 7 by 12, which is equal to 12 minus 7 by 12. It is 5 by 12th work. It is done by C. In how many days? In 10 days. So, C is 10 days work is what is left? That is 5 by 12. So, C is 1 day's work is 5 by 12. Divided by 10. That is 5 by 12 into 10. 5 by 120 which is 1 by 24. This is C's one day's work. So C will take how many days? The reciprocal of this. 24 days to complete the work. This is the answer. 24 days. Next question. This is the next question. Find the value of root of 30 plus root of 30 plus root of 30 plus etc. For finding the value, just take this as x. So root of 30 plus root of 30 plus root of 30 is equal to x. Let us take this is again x. So this is let us let it be 30 plus x, which is equal to x. Squaring both sides. So, the, so 30 plus x is equal to square of x is x square. Taking everything to one side. So x square minus 30 minus x is equal to 0. Or x square minus x minus 30 is equal to 0. So we formed a quadratic equation. Solving the quadratic equation we will get the value of x. In order to find the root of this quadratic equation. We just need to factorize. Uh, the Write the middle term as as sum of two factors. So, uh, here the sum is minus 1 and the product is minus 30. So, the product of 30 is 1 and 10, sorry, 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10 and 5 and 6. Which of these numbers on adding or subtracting gives the sum minus 1? It is 5 and 6. So, it will be 5 and minus 6. 5 plus minus 6 is minus 1. And the product of 5 and minus 6 is minus 30. So this is the current factor which have to which we have to replace minus x. So it is x square minus 6x plus 5x minus 30 is equal to 0. Here x is common. So we can take x x common. So x minus 6 plus here 5 is common. So 5 into x minus 6. x minus 6 is common in both these terms. So x minus 6 into x plus 5 is equal to 0. So the values of we can equate each of this to 0. So the answer is x is equal to 6 and x equal to minus 5. The correct answer is x is equal to 6. Next question. This is the next question. Here the, uh, the question is the mark price of a piano was rupees 15,000. At the time of sale, there was a successive discount of 20%, 10% and 10% respectively on it. The sale price is. Here we have, we are given mark price and discount and we are asked to find the sale price. Mark, uh, so the discount is always calculated on mark price. So, it is given that mark price is rupees 15,000. Then discount is given as 20% successive discounts. That is 20%, 10% and 10%. If two discounts, two successive discounts, the net discount is two uh, successive discounts x and y. So the net discount will be x plus y minus x into y. Discount is always negative. So we can take it as Minus x minus y. Minus into minus is plus. So plus xy by 100. 
Here x is 20. Next discount is 10. So minus 10, minus 20, minus 10 plus 20 into 10. 200 by 100. Which is minus 20 plus 10 is 30. Minus 30 plus 2. That is minus 28. Again, this is the first discount. And the third one is the next discount. So again, we are applying this formula. That is minus 28 minus 10 minus into minus plus 28 into 10 by 100. So it is minus 38 plus 2.8 which is equal to 35.2. Okay. But we are asked to find SP. SP is equal to first we have to find discount. Discount is equal to or we can find directly SP. SP is equal to MP into 100 minus discount percentage divided by 100. Here the mark price is 15,000. Okay. And uh, 100 minus discount is 35.2 by 100. Which is equal to 15. We can cancel this. 150 into 100 minus this is 64.8 Okay, 64.8 Or oh, it is 15 into 648 648 into 15 is the required answer 8 is a 40 More than the cost price. If he allows a discount of 6 1 by 4 percentage, then find his gain percentage. It is given that a trade, tradesman marks his goods 30 percentage more than cost price. So let us take the cost price as rupees 100. Mark price is cost price, it is, he is marking 30 percentage more than the cost price. So 100 plus 30 by 100 of 100, that is 130 rupees. Next is, he gives a discount of 6 1 by 4 percentage. Always discount is calculated on mark price. So discount percentage is given as 6 1 by 4 percentage which is 25 by 4 percentage. So discount is equal to discount, per discount percentage by 100 into mark price. So 25 by 400 into mark price is 130 rupees. Sixty-five by eight. That's the discount. Uh, we have to find gain percentage. Gain gain is actually cost uh, selling price minus cost price. So in order to find gain percentage, first we have to find gain. And before finding gain, we have to find the SP. SP is always uh, mark mark price. Minus discount. Mark price is 130 and discount is 65 by 8. That is 8 into 13 is 104. So 1040 minus 65 by 8 which is equal to 10 minus 5 is 5. 13 minus 6 is 7. Uh, next 9 minus 6 is 3, 375 by 8. So 975 by 8. This is the value of SP. Now we have to find gain. Gain is SP minus CP. SP is 975 by 8 and CP is 100. So 975 minus 800 divided by 8 which is equal to 571. 175 by 8. So gain percentage is gain by CP into 100. Which is gain percentage. We have to find the gain percentage. Gain is 175 by 8. 8 by CP is 100. So into 100 into. In order to convert to percentage we have to multiply by 100. 100 and 100 gets cancelled. So 175 by 8 which is equal to 21. 
सेवन बाई एट परसेंटेज नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज थर्ड प्रोपोर्शन ऑफ ट्वेल्व एंड एट इज दिस इज अ क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम रेशियो एंड प्रोपोर्शन इफ ए इज टू बी दिस प्रोपोर्शन टू बी इज टू डी देन ए इज कॉल्ड फर्स्ट प्रोपोर्शन B is called second proportion and D is called third proportion. Okay, so here we are given. Uh, we are asked to find the third proportional of twelve and eight. So here we are given twelve as first proportion and eighteen as second proportion. A is first proportion, B is second proportion, and D is the third proportion. So twelve is to eight is to eight is to D. In this case, the value is given by the product of closer terms is equal to product of extreme terms. That is, b square is equal to a into d. In this case, eight into eight is equal to twelve into d. From here, we, have, we can find d. D is equal to eight into eight divided by twelve, which is equal to four four threes are eight by फोर टू सा एंड फोर थ्री सा टू एस सिक्सटीन बाई थ्री विच इज द वैल्यू ऑफ टी नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सचिन हेज अ सर्टन आवरेज फोर इलेवन इनिंग्स इन ट्वेल्थ इनिंग्स ही स्वॉस वन ट्वेंटी वन एंड दर बाय इंक्रीज हिस्स आवरेज बाय फाइव वन हिस्स न्यू आवरेज इज दिस इज द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सचिन हेज अ सर्टन आवरेज फोर इलेवन इनिंग्स वी हैव टू फाइव In the twelfth innings, he scored one twenty runs, and so the average increased by five runs. We had to find the new average. Let us take the old average, the initial average, average of eleven innings, B X. So the sum of eleven innings will be, ah, uh, what is actually average? Average is equal to sum of observation by number of observation. So here the number of observation is eleven. Average is x and the number of observation is eleven. So the sum of observation will be eleven x. Eleven x. Then it is given that in the twelfth innings he scored one twenty runs. So the average of sum of let us take first let us take the sum of twelve innings. It will be the sum of eleven innings plus Twelfth innings. In twelfth innings, he scored one twenty. So one twenty. Average of it will be eleven x plus one twenty divided by there are twelve innings. So by twelve. And it is said that thereby increases the average by five runs. First case, the average was x, and now it increases by five. So we can relate these two. That is eleven x plus one twenty. Is equal to twelve x plus sixty. So x will be equal to sixty. This is the value of uh, uh, sorry. This is the uh, value of average of eleven innings. What is actually asked? We are asked to find the new average. So new average will be old average plus its average increase by five. So sixty five is the value of New average. Next question. This is the next question. If rupees one twenty six point five zero is divided among A, B, and C in the ratio two is to five is to four, share of B exceeds that of A by. That is one twenty six point five zero rupees is divided among A, B, and C. A share is they are related by the ratio two is to five is to four. Let the share of A be two x. B B five x and C B four x. We have to find by how much amount B exceeds A. So we have to find five x minus two x. For that, we, first we have to find x. In order to find x, it is given that this quantity is divided among these three persons. So two x plus five x plus four x is Actually, the total amount one twenty six point five zero five five plus nine plus two eleven eleven x is equal to one twenty six point five zero or x is equal to one twenty six point five zero by eleven eleven ones are 
again 1, 55, 5. 11.50. This is the value of x. So we have to find the difference between b and a. So first we have to find a, a is 2x. That is 2 into 11.5. 2 into 11.5 is 23. b is 5x. Which is equal to 5 into 11.5. 5 5 are 25. 2 remain 5 plus 2 is 7. Uh, 1 5 is 5. 57 45. The difference between b and k gives the value of this. b exists a by. So 57.5 minus 23. Which is equal to 34.5. This is the answer. Next question. This is the next question. A train goes from Delhi to Agra at an average speed of 20 km per hour and comes back at an average speed of 30 km per hour. The average speed of train for the whole journey is. This is a question from uh, time and distance. Here it is said that a train goes from Delhi to Agra at an average speed of 20 km per hour and comes back at an average speed of 30 km per hour. Here the distance is same. If the distance is same, then the average speed is given by let it travels from D to A at a speed X and from A to D with a speed Y. Then the average speed uh, when distance is same is 2XY by X plus Y. Here X is 20. So 2 into 20 into Y is 30 by x 20 plus 30 that is 2 into 20 into 30 divided by 50 2 into 25 5 5s are 5 4s are that is 120 by 5 which is equal to 24 24 km per hour is the average speed of the train next question this is the next question the compound interest on rupees 5000 for 3 years at 10 percent per annum will amount to. So here we are given principal, time and rate and we are asked to find the compound interest. We know the formula uh, in case of compound interest, interest, compound, interest is compounded yearly then the amount is equal to principal P into 1 plus R by 100 the whole raised to N. Here P is the principal, R is the rate and N is the time and A is the amount received after N years. So here P is 5000. 5000 into 1 plus R is 10. 10 by 100 the whole raised to 3. So it is 5000 into 10 plus 1 is 11 by 10 the whole cube. It is 11 by 10 into 11 by 10 into 11 by 10. 11 into 11 is 121. 121 into 11 is uh, we can do the multiplication with 11 easily by first we know that 11 into 11 is 121. So some, somebody will be knowing all will be knowing uh, 11 cube but I am just saying how to multiply a number easily by 11. You just multiply the n digits by 1. So 1 into 1 is 1. Then you have to add the 2 digits. 2 plus 1 is 3. Again the, the other 2 digits. 2 plus 1 is 3. 1 into 1 is 1. This is Multiplication of any number by 11. Multiply the extreme terms by 11 and add the other terms. So 5 into 1, 3. This is 1 plus 5, 3 plus 15, 3 plus 15 is 16. 6. So 6, 6, 5, 5. This is M O. We have to find the compound of this. Compound is equal to M O minus principal. 6, 6, 5, 5 minus 5,000. Which is equal to 5, 5, 6, 1. This is the value of compound. Now we have covered 15 questions. Uh, in the next class we will be covering the rest 15 questions along with reasoning mock test. If you are having any suggestions or if you need any of the classes of any topic, please comment below. Uh, and if you like my video, please subscribe to my channel for getting more RRBJ related videos. Thank you.